I don't know if you heard about it. There's this technology called artificial intelligence. This is a, a different year at MWC 25. It seems like people are starting to make sense of it. Is it a big tool for saving money or for making money for carriers? And how are you working with those guys on this? Yeah, I mean, look, it's both, right? I think there's a saving motion and saving money aspect to this that's really built around how do we think about first contact center transformation? How do we think about um, uh, automation? How do we think about employee productivity? And we've seen a shift of a conversation from thinking about automation of repetitive tasks towards agentic AI. So would you say that there, the trials are moving into actual implementations now for a lot of your customers, uh, including with agentic AI? Uh, they certainly are. They are for us internally. So within Microsoft, we dog food quite a bit is what we would call customer zero. So we have a number of different agentic applications that we've built internally for the customer support organization, our customer success organization, and our sales organization as well in terms of seeing somewhere around 8% improvement in customer engagements because sellers are more in tune on customer health. So we're at this interesting stage where, you know, we used to think in three-year roadmaps and three-year visions. We still do. And we're thinking about multi-agent frameworks through a three-year lens, expecting them to materialize in six months. Right. So everything that we call a three year vision is happening significantly faster. Um, I think that there's a number of things that we'll see in the multi agent frameworks that just become fully automated. Right. I think RPA has, has proven itself to be a very brittle technology in, inside of workflows that change very rapidly. And the emergence of agentic capabilities inside of those workflows is really going to start to speed up the ability to adapt and change and remove some of the brittleness and adapt to changing market conditions. Um, I think we'll continue to see a race on large language models that continue to trump each other on a very regular basis. But I think we'll also continue to see the rise of small language models distilled from those large language models for specific tasks, as well as fit for purpose AI models. It's not just that AI will be part of the network. AI will be part of everything you do. Right. Every role you have will include AI in some way, and eventually it will become transparent. Yeah. It'll just be there. Are there applications of the technology that are emerging for Microsoft to help with different industries to make those, uh, to, to sort of nuance the approach for different verticals, for example? As more and more of these applications emerge, I think there's opportunities for telecoms to really think about their enterprise customers, their targeted SMB at retail at other industries, and look at bundling network connectivity, network capability with security as they currently do, but also the rise of what is a growing complex application ecosystem that needs some convergence and routes to market. I think when you think about end-to-end -end threat intelligence, when you think about fraud, when you think about distributed denial of service attacks, when you think about nation state actors, I think these relationships are super important.